Right. Hmm. Um, hi. Hi again. My name is Vladimir. I'm from Onsec Lab company, and uh, I want to get this report together with my friend Alexander, but his visa were rejected. It's not so good, but not so critical, of course. Uh, I want to speak about uh, server-side request uh, forgery attacks, um, pawns using it attacks, uh, and something about uh, new techniques, and uh, something about uh, real stories from uh, reward programs uh, using server-side request forgery attacks. So it's a monster. <laughs> uh, something about us. Um, I'm and Alexander, founders of a uh, small web application security company in Russia uh, since nine years. And um, I'm a web application security expert and also a bug hunter. And Alexander is a network security expert and also a Debian and uh, a maintainer of packages. Um, our company uh, have an English blog. You can uh, follow us and also by Twitter. And uh, we are added by something reward programs such as Google, Yandex, and another, another, another reward programs. Also, we want to create yet another application firewall solution. I think it's a short intro, and uh, that's all. And what about server-side request forgery? Uh, server-side request forgery attacks uh, first um, described it in eight years by Daryl Hayland at the Schmookon conference, and then reincarnated by me during uh, Yandex month of uh, security bugs of 11 years. It's the first uh, implementation of uh, server-side request for JIT uh, using an uh, XML external entity vulnerability. And then uh, in the next year, in the 12th year, um, server-side request for JIT uh, by EAP scan guys, Alexander Polikov and Dmitry Chistuhin, uh, successfully exploited SAP system, uh, uh, of course, using uh, new techniques of uh, Gopher protocol schema. Uh, which provide us to make uh, partially, partially uh, any TCP packet in, inside the in, uh, intranet. And then uh, <laughs> this kind of attacks uh, were already discovered by uh, Rias, Velika, and end of uh, 12th year, and then exploited and cached and fast CJ by us again in Zero Nights conference. And uh, at the final of uh, year, um, our techniques, server side request forgery, uh, was rewarded by White Hat Security as uh, second place in top 10 web hacking techniques of uh, 12th year. And uh, also uh, got a CV number of uh, 918. Eight. Uh, so, uh, something about uh, SSRF again. Um, What's a server-side request forgery from attacker and uh, from a defender? Server-side request forgery uh, by CV uh, is not described in, uh, incorrectly because, um, because in, you can see in definition of CV that um, server-side request forgery attacks is web server ability uh, to use a URL from user parameters and uh, use this um, as a source of any any uh, packets. But it's not so uh, correct uh, terms, uh, correct definition, because not only web servers are vulnerable to server-side request forgery and not uh, only using uh, URLs. You can see a simple example of uh, PHP code, uh, which is vulnerable to server-side request forgery without URLs in uh, user parameters. Um, I can also use uh, socket injection, such as CRLF injection to socket uh, to forge a request. You can't, uh, in this case, change a destination address, destination port, but you can change a packet uh, to host and uh, uh, get a service side request forger, of course, again, because it's uh, not a uh, logic in a web application. It's a in simple injection and the service side request forger, of course, also. So before we start, um, server side request forger attacks, and described it <laughs> some slides ago, uh, used to bypass uh, host based authorization. It's a previously implementation of this kind of attacks and exploits. Also, used to, for bypass firewalls um, and uh, abusing uh, trust relationships, and uh, maybe used for other, other, other 
implementations, other kinds of uh, exploitations. But is there other, um, any other ways to do the same? Is there any other ways to bypass firewalls, to bypass, uh, uh, to abuse a host-based house, to forge uh, packets from a host which you want? It's, uh, obviously, it's not uh, one uh, method. And uh, a long time ago, in the early 19th, described uh, simple techniques called spoofing. I think you <laughs> know, know these techniques in details. So, uh, hello from early 19th techniques, uh, which uh, works, uh, works nowadays. Um, but, um, the main, main idea of uh, UDP spoofing based on uh, packets forwards between uh, network interfaces as this feature def uh, enabled by default in Debian and Red Hat Linuxes and the other, other um, um, operation systems. Uh, and the UDP packet can be easily sent from a uh, internet uh, by classic spoofing attack. In uh, many hosters, um, UDP are not allowed from a gray network, from a internet, but uh, it's very, very security hosters. In, that, in this case, you can also exploit uh, UDP by simple buying a host in a, this hosting to abuse other, other, uh, other customers of this hosting. It's not a great. Um, you can exploit your SNMP, memcached, and other UDP uh, plus host-based our servers. SNMP not so host-based, uh, but uh, you can exploit this using a public key. It's a very, very common situation. Uh, to protect from this, use uh, this, this, uh, CTL, this CTL, uh, net dot, uh, IP version 4.conf, your interface name, and RP filter. Uh, from uh, this uh, CTL. Uh, it's enabled by default and obviously working from <laughs> early 19th to nowadays. So, advanced UDP spoofing exploitation, uh, which we use it uh, during our security audits and other research work, uh, based on uh, exploitation uh, services as a, as a service site request forgery. Uh, it's uh, also known. Um, also called uh, reflection attacks, and, and uh, well known uh, since uh, since uh, 19th. Uh, but now uh, you can exploit uh, this to bypass in firewalls in deep network. I think um, at next slide I try to <laughs> to describe this more correctly. Um, simple spoofing attacks, uh, reflection attacks, uh, where service uh, response uses it as a request to another service. You spoof an uh, initial packet and, uh, and uh, describe in this packet uh, source address uh, to another host which you want to exploit. And the server uh, get your request and uh, generate, uh, uh, generate a response uh, to your source address, spoof it address, and exploit something uh, in a deep network uh, through firewalls, if uh, firewalls have a, a rule to do this, of course. And spoofed packet attackers that source IP port from a victim, and um, also <laughs> in, in web application security area, Memcached, it's my favorite service because uh, use, it, uh, use, uh, use it in a uh, great number of our customers and uh, have a host-based authorization in, a, uh, in the most cases. Um, and uh, of course, Echo service, <laughs> if you, if you <laughs> can find uh, Echo service in modern infrastructures, network infrastructures and service, Echo service is ideal for this purpose because Echo service um, generate a uh, response um, uh, as the same as the request. It's uh, not so easy. So it's a uh, simple reflection, uh, reflection um, attack and uh, also may be known, um, may, um, may call it as a service site request forgery attacks. This is a monster, and the monster uh, want to exploit host B um, through firewall. A monster have no ability to send packets directly to host B because firewalls, uh, firewall uh, restricts this packet. Monster can use uh, <laughs> techniques from <laughs> early 19s. Um, must uh, spoof a packet, UDP packet to host A, of course, UDP packet. I, uh, 
at the next slide I want to speak about TCP also. Uh, it's only about, just about UDP. Um, wants to spoof a packet and uh, to host A and set um, source address and uh, destination address to host B. Then host A generate an answer to response, yeah, response to this uh, packet and send it to host B of course because, because it's, uh, <laughs> it's a previously fact. So, uh, in exploitation memcached, uh, uh, we <laughs> research a pinpoint attack, pinpoint effect of uh, this exploitation. Uh, simple way, uh, of course, reflection attacks depends on your protocol, on your response formats, um, and uh, to do reflection attacks, uh, you must uh, you must find a service um, which. Uh, which is the correlation between responses and requests. And, and the response request, uh, response packet must be valid as a request uh, to the another service. It's the it's main idea of reflection attacks, as you want. At first, uh, at first point, uh, monster uh, spoofed a packet to set a K in memcache to host A, and uh, K have a value stats, as you can see at this slide. Uh, then monster again spoofed a new packet, uh, and uh, packet data get uh, get this key. Uh, key have name K, <laughs> key, and then spoofed this packet and uh, fed uh, source of this packet of host B. Um, sent that packet to host A, memcached of course, and host A generate. Um, generate response to host B with the value of uh, stats. Neat trick of this uh, that host B parse this request as a two independent commands. First commands is value key is, uh, uh, it's not correct commands, but uh, parsing continue and stats commands executed at host B. It's main, uh, main idea of uh, this effect. But <laughs> they're also not so good because um, uh, after this uh, injection, host A and host B um, established an uh, infinite, infinite session um, and, uh, um, and uh, by exchanging, by exchanging uh, error commands. And this is really infinite, uh, infinite circle. And, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, monster injected uh, commands into host B and this is, uh, this is uh, working attacks. So, uh, in this slide, you can see in the TCP damp of uh, these attacks, and the red color, um, red color marked uh, initial request, and the, the green color uh, marked uh, in, uh, main idea of this attack, and it's injection. And then uh, you can see also a red, a red color at the bottom of slide, uh, infinite, uh, infinite cycle of uh, memcached exchange. So, mm. and uh, you can see also a simple command to do this, and um, at the top of slide, and <coughs> by red, red, uh, by red color um, marked uh, injection data, and uh, uh, green color it's a UDP header, UDP header uh, which uh, memcached understand. It. So. Hello from <laughs> 12th year. In the 12th year, uh, TCP first open uh, declaration uh, been implemented in the Linux kernel since uh, 3.6. Uh, TCP first open provide us uh, to send SYN uh, plus data packets in a one, in a one packet. And uh, it's look like a best way to spoofing TCP packets, but not so good because uh, uh, Syn plus data also require a special cookie crafted by server. It's the initial classic uh, TCP connection and sent to a client to create a new connection uh, by using TCP fast open. It's not so good to attacker because in the Linux implementation, the cookie uh, generates by advanced encryption standard, uh, region DL, as you know, um, using a key and the client IP. Key have uh, uh, 60 bytes. Uh, length and uh, it's not so brutable in uh, uh, real time. Um, 
but we still um, we still waiting for other TFO implementations. An example, uh, Microsoft can do something <laughs> vulnerable on other vendors. So. Uh, TCP first open uh, also have a by design security limitations, uh, not so bugs, um, but uh, only limitations. Um, first limitation is uh, one cookie for all client ports. Uh, and uh, uh, if you know a cookie um, to this client, you can forge any packets to any ports without any restriction by server. Server uh, validates only client IP. And the and, uh, second uh, limita limitation is uh, one secret key for a server for all clients. If you know a server key, you can uh, generate cookie for all clients, but it's not possible at this moment to know uh, the server key. Um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> another vector of attacks, uh, network attacks in general, uh, with the same of uh, server-side request forgery effect, is using uh, AP version 6. It's implementation uh, widely uh, widely used at this moment and um, can be used simple to bypass filters such as regular expressions uh, which uh, uh, restrict uh, local host uh, local host uh, domain name and uh, um, IP version 4 um, 126.0.0.1 uh, IP address by using uh, IP version 6 uh, local address. Also, um, can be exploited link local firewalls bypass and exploiting auto configurations uh, IP version 6. In details, at the, this slide. First, TCP first open concept ethics use it, uh, this trick uh, that one cookie uh, for a client and uh, uh, any ports. In the clouds, in the, it's only a concept, only uh, for. Uh, my, my mind experiment, not in real cases, mm. uh, can be exploited uh, while uh, any manager in the cloud uh, change IP address of your host. And um, if monster have uh, access to host A with the IP address A, um, he can uh, generate a TCP first open cookie for this IP address, and uh, at the moment, uh, in the future, uh, when uh, cloud manager change IP addresses, uh, monster at the new IP addresses can exploit uh, exploit a spoof packet for uh, for his previous IP address. It's obviously, and uh, I think it's uh, not for another comments. And suddenly, it is first open by design limitation, and I think uh, it must be described in the RFC. So. IP version 6 link local addresses. Uh, <laughs> our another trick uh, while our security audits and uh, exploitation of our clients. Um, based on, um, uh, based on uh, <laughs> neat, neat trick about link local addresses uh, because uh, many uh, system admins um, forget about these addresses and um, configure firewalls only only uh, by using currently IP version 4 addresses or IP version 6, uh, but not link local addresses. And uh, host A with a monster can uh, uh, can use uh, can bypass firewalls using uh, link local addresses of host B. Uh, monster can uh, try to sniff uh, broadcasters to determine. Uh, addresses, uh, link local addresses of uh, host B, or, uh, but it, it, of course it's require root privileges, or can use, um, can use AP, link local AP version fix by Mac calculator, uh, but not in the Microsoft network because uh, Microsoft have no ILGA to generate uh, AP version 6 link, lo link local addresses by Macs, only, uh, only from uh, randoms. So, uh, another <laughs> yet another implementation of IP version 6 to provide us uh, to do the same as SSRF, so side request forgery attacks is using road advertisement. Um, again, require a monster on a host in a same network segment as a victim host, and um, also require root privileges because there are no ways to forge uh, road 
advertisement packet without root privileges. Uh, Monster have a possibility to do this and uh, create a, uh, create a RA packet to host B with new link local uh, new AP version six addresses. Host B by default uh, any um, numbers of operation systems such as Debian and uh, Red Hat again um, have uh, enabled a feature to uh, AP version six configuration by, by rotor advertisement. But I try again. This, uh, this required. Um, that host A and host B exists in one network segment, not from the internet, only in one network segment. And then, uh, of course, <laughs> host B receive uh, array packet and uh, add the new IP version 6 address to his interface. And uh, now there are no ways uh, to block this address because it's a new address and the firewalls uh, based on blacklists uh, will be bypassed in this case. So. What's the conclusion? Host-based house must die, of course. There's no way to protect your host-based house host um, using uh, firewalls and others. It's not, uh, not so good idea to strict uh, network, uh, network firewalls uh, to, um, to protect your services. Um, really a great idea to implement uh, uh, authorization in this host and uh, this is really work. So now we start. <laughs> now I can start about uh, talk about server-side request forgery protocols uh, schemas and uh, try to talk to you about these schemas. And um, also I want to speak about uh, server-side request forgery, not only in web applications. It's not a good idea to describe server-side request forgery attacks uh, as a as a treat of web applications. Not so uh, correct because uh, as we show a um, few slides ago, um, server-side request forgery attacks can be also used, um, exploited by simple reflection spoofing or something in other ways, not only in web applications. So, uh, protocol schemas. Uh, different protocols, uh, provides to attacker different actions, of course, because um, protocols have a, um, himself a packet format and uh, any, any implementation of this uh, format, uh, packet, this formatted packet uh, sending. Uh, not only sending data, but also can leak data. Uh, if you have a server-side request forgery in a, a packet with uh, data which you want to sniff, you can sniff this uh, simple by redirect this uh, packet to other host or forge uh, destination address or something else trick. Describe it in the server side request forgery bible cheat sheet. It's a chapter of exploitation original request data sniffing. Yeah? It's so not so new, but it's so new. <laughs> Protocol schema telnet, uh, I think uh, really. Uh, rare um, implemented, but exists in curl and exists in Java, um, in the previous version of Java, of course, before global fix of protocol schemas, and uh, .NET also. Um, Telnet protocol schema <laughs> provide attacker to read data from STD in, uh, from STD in of process, uh, which uh, can be SSR effort by attacker. It's maybe uh, uh, it may provide to read all clients' data in case of common gateway interface, CGI, but not so common in this case, in, in nowadays. And um, so bad that uh, in mod, mod PHP ways or fast CGI, uh, STD in, STD out on zero device. Uh, but common gateway interface is still for enterprise web apps and also uh, we have a uh, .NET implementation, Java implementation, which uh, depends on, on application server and uh, application logic. It's a really nice idea to work with std in, std out process using server-side request for attacks. And not only packets, not only network exploitation, just only uh, system, system process data. It's uh, really must be understood by everything uh, who want to exploit uh, server-side request for attacks. It's really possible and really useful in many cases. So, 
I want to ask you which server is the most secure in your environment, in your network environment. I think uh, it's a VPN server because VPN server uh, basically is front end, yeah, front end and have a unrestricted access from internet and uh, you must uh, configure your VPN server uh, with the maximum security restrictions, with the maximum security privileges and uh, <laughs> followed by security updates at the server. So also you can um, answer that s any other security socket layer service, uh, the most secure in your, web in your network environment. It's uh, also obviously because I think that uh, security socket layer is the most, is the most famous <laughs> security uh, security guard for for any any uh, any network services such as Jaber, such as uh, VPN, such as HTTP uh, called HTTPS of course, and other 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 and other. Um, but it's not so correct because tada, because you have a way to SSRF public infrastructure. It's it's really great, and uh, you have uh, two cats. It's a good cat. It's not so good cat. Um, Client can create a self signed certificate and include a service site request forgery attacks vector inside a serial file in the certificate, inside the uh, online certificate status protocol uh, URL file, inside the timestamp protocol, and uh, maybe other uh, extended attributes of certificate, and then send this certificate as a client certificate to public infrastructure to SSL validator. <laughs> Now, SSL validator have uh, two ways and uh, maybe three ways to validate the certificate. In, uh, yeah, I think I described this. Uh, this uh, exploitation, of course, depends on service uh, SSL uh, validator logic. SSL validation logic can check a certificate uh, trust uh, relationships be between uh, before. Uh, uh, validation of certificate status or not. It depends only um, by implementation of SSL and not described in RFC or something and other uh, documents and instructions. It's only by developer choose, that means system administration choose. Uh, external resources, uh, as I said before, can be defined in certificates such as serial file, or CSP file, TSP file, URLs, and uh, maybe others uh, depends on uh, current um, implementation of SSL and, and PKI, of course. So, different implementation of uh, PKI uh, by green color not vulnerable and by red color vulnerable. Um, simple way, uh, Nginx way to check serial CSP not from a certificate but only from a config. And uh, there's no way to exploit Nginx using this attack vector because you can't <laughs> change uh, Nginx config from the uh, internet. Uh, also a good way uh, to check trust relationships, uh, check sign chain of CA, intermediate CA, and uh, user CA, uh, user sign chain uh, before checking uh, certificate status. It's a good way. Uh, but also can be vulnerable in theory if you know a private key of CA. But if you, uh, if you know a private key of CA, I think service side request for attacks, it's not needed for you. You can exploit anything uh, without it. Um, bad ways to implementation of service side request forgery, um, SSL to provide service side request forgery, is checking certificate status before trust relationship, such as CA and uh, intermediate CA. And uh, other is checking intermediate CA certificate status before trust relationship because intermediate CA in CA also can be created by attacker with self-signed um, root CA. It's not so. Yeah, it's, uh, this slide you can see uh, different uh, uh, different uh, <laughs> block schemas of uh, verify certificate uh, algo. Uh, first column is. Uh, um, I, any vendors ask me to don't disclose a vendor's name, which uh, vulnerable to this, and I think this vendor A, vendor A implementation first column uh, based on a simple check if uh, user certificate is self-signed, certificate uh, were rejected, was rejected, and if not, 
um, certificate uh, parsed and the uh, status certificate uh, will be validated and you can, fi you can find the service side request for GI attacks in this case. It's uh, easy to understand um, because as I said again, serial URL, uh, OCSP URL and timestamp protocol URL um, define it in a certificate, in self-signed certificate and <laughs> if you have a CA such as self-signed CA, uh, exploit uh, work. Um, and the second column is also vulnerable, uh, ELGA. Uh, parse certificate at the first stage, and the second stage is checking um, CA uh, or intermediate CA, and then verify this CA status before trust relationship, before checking sign check, before uh, compare, uh, compare the CA uh, with a trust case store. And uh, again, uh, attacker can uh, sell, uh, can uh, <laughs> issue a uh, self-signed CA and uh, uh, define a serial and uh, TSP and OCSP URLs in uh, this CA or intermediate CA certificate. It's not so, uh, it's not so <laughs> hard to attacker if you understand this. And then um, the third column, uh, you can see uh, nice SSL implementations which uh, first validated uh, trust relations and signage before certificate status validation. Uh, it's uh, another <laughs> vendor's implementation way of uh, SSL checking and other. And uh, uh, I think that I have slide. Yeah, uh, this slide you can see um, main uh, schema of uh, these attacks. And the uh, monster issue a certificate with serial uh, CSP and TSP uh, files, um, uh, which. Uh, reference it to internal host B and send this certificate to host A. It's maybe VPN server or other server uh, which validated client certificate. And it's not so easy to uh, use this in the wild because uh, many servers such as application servers by default uh, sent a, to client file sent to client during SSL session uh, which uh, I'm not want to check your certificate. But anyway, if you patched a uh, GNU TLS or other SSL library, you can anyway send a certificate to a server. And any servers, um, I think the must come, <laughs> come a number of all servers, all uh, SSL servers can pass this certificate and uh, then uh, uh, start a validation process. And uh, the way, Monster again uh, exploited a host B, and um, in this case, um, Memcached. I really love Memcached. It's my it's my bread. So, something about uh, service side request uh, forgery practice. Uh, uh, as I said again, I can disclose uh, vendors to, um, <laughs> to my ethical <laughs> principles in uh, public infrastructure attacks. But you can uh, test this attack to on your on your um, VPN servers, on your web servers, on your application servers, and other implementations of uh, SSL, and I think it should work. Now about something about our server-side request forgery practice. Um, we <laughs> try to participant in uh, Yandex bug bounty system uh, and the reward program and uh, find something interesting. We exploited uh, memcached in the Yandex intranet using server-side request forgery and uh, discovered a few intranet services in the Yandex uh, network and also discovered uh, main infrastructure bugs uh, which accepted by Yandex team as a critical, and also got a fun and skills, of course, because uh, server-side request for JATX, it's uh, something new for us and uh, something new for, uh, for community, I think. And uh, we really sh try to shock Yandex security team. So, um, our results. 11 server-side request forgery bugs uh, without classic ways to use uh, XML external entity. Seven uh, XXE plus server-side request forgery bugs and uh, um, much money. And uh, average uh, 
716 uh, dollars per one buck. It's not so good, and not so, <laughs> but not so uh, critical because the max, maximum uh, AWAT system in Yandex currently is uh, um, 100, no, 100 dollars. So nice, nice server-side request for the story using uh, DNS service. Uh, Yandex and so Google have a webmaster, webmaster service provides. In general, Yandex and Google have really, uh, <laughs> really similar services. Um, webmaster service provides um, content receiving, uh, but uh, only from your hosts, your sites. And this validation process is based on files and DNS records. It's not a so good idea because verification by domain, but not by IP. And, uh, <laughs> We create the attack vector uh, to verify domain and then change a record to this domain inside the Yandex intranet to try uh, receive content from intranet. Of it's, I think it's uh, ambiguously ambiguously vector, but maybe it should work. Work. You can see this in this slide. Uh, it's an interface of webmaster uh, Yandex webmaster uh, tool and. Uh, you can see uh, my domain at my host, and you can see that my domain have a A record to Yandex intranet. And uh, I receive a content uh, which marked by red color at the bottom of the slide. Easy and really, <laughs> really hard because now uh, I have access to Yandex intranet restricted only by firewalls, but I have no ways to uh, validate uh, firewalls rules. I have only tried to uh, to receive data from some hosts, uh, which I can can what? I can use also <laughs> uh, intranet scan using KCSRF. It's not so ethical for me, yes, because it's generate uh, ideas, uh, ideas alerts, and uh, it's not by reward program because reward program um, mean that uh, you can also exploit uh, front end bugs, the application bugs, uh, such as um, logic bypasses, XSS, and other. Uh, Server-side bugs also, but not uh, by not mean uh, uh, exploitation of these bugs. Uh, I'm using Google to hack Yandex. It's not so <laughs> not, not so hard to understand to find hosts in intranet and nothing more, uh, and exploit um, exploitation of SSRF uh, to retrieve sentence data is not so ethical for me, and uh, I use this only for validate these attacks and receive. Uh, not critical and not uh, sen sen mm, sentences data from intranet, but, uh, but to demonstrate uh, that I have access to uh, restricted by firewalls from, uh, from internet hosts. So. In this slide you can see a simple way to find <laughs> uh, config files in Google. Um, someone from Yandex team published a uh, configuration file in Google uh, in a forum and Google indexed this file and I find this using a simple command line. Um, I think it's not, uh, not a problem for attacker and uh, I think it's ethical. I uh, couldn't use uh, network scan and the other uh, black <laughs> black ways to exploitation of service side request forgery and uh, can validate um, this kind of attack, can validate my service side request forgery exploit. And uh, this slide, you can see IP address, uh, which, uh, which showed at this slide. It's on the, and also a domain name and uh, uh, some configuration parameters, such as I think you, you know <laughs> what, <laughs> what you find in this uh, configuration file. Uh, not so easy way, but again, this is not a uh, classic service side request for attacks described in the CVE uh, because there are no URL in general. We have a static URL and the only change a DNS record to intranet. Uh, but this attack works and uh, I receive some data from intranet. So, uh, I think that I. <laughs> saved your time to lunch, and uh, now you can ask me any questions. Thank you.
Yeah, right. I think I missed something. <laughs> What? Um, Andrew asked me uh, what way to receive a data from host B in these uh, attack techniques. Because uh, you can only forge a packet and you have no way to receive a memcached case. You have no way to get a data from memcached. I think, uh, I think, um, <laughs> not so clearly because my ethical <laughs> principles. Uh, first, uh, in case of memcached, there is no way to do this, uh, as I know. But uh, at this case, uh, you can change a memcached server to other NoSQL uh, server, which used UDP. And in this case, uh, you can use uh, special commands in this uh, uh, NoSQL uh, server, such as Redis and CouchDB and other servers. Uh, and uh, Sometimes in this logic you can find a command uh, like ping, like, um, like connect uh, to external data and other. And you must exploit uh, this as a blind, as a blind, uh, blind techniques. And there is no way even uh, using a timing. You, can, you have no ways to read data uh, in memcached by this. But in a real security audits, um, uh, when we know an uh, application and uh, know something about memcached format, uh, this way only for injection sessions. We can inject uh, administrative administri session with uh, great privileges in memcached using this packet and uh, then check this session from a web host, from a front end. It's not only, uh, not only one way, as I think, but uh, in case of memcached, uh, I think I have no ways to get data. Um, in your last example with the Yandex, uh, you used the Webmaster tool site, um, and by setting the A records to their internal IP, uh, the the Webmaster tools would connect to their internal uh, internal IP address. Why would they al their internal firewall allow this connection at all? <laughs> I think you must uh, ask Yandex guys which you presented in this hall uh, about this. Uh, it sounds to me like a poorly designed firewall on their end. <laughs> really, I have no way to answer you. Okay. Uh, it's a black box for me, and uh, I only try to do something cool things and uh, check uh, if it's work or not. I have no ways to validate many firewalls, rules, and other because I have no access to these firewalls. Any other questions from the floor? Yeah. Uh, thank you for a great talk. I have a question about uh, UDP reflections that you mentioned earlier. Uh, is there a way to do network reconnaissance to scan the network without knowing if the service is actually on that IP and port? Because uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, here you must know the host B IP address and uh, the fact that memcached runs there. Um, and is it possible to do some reconnaissance with the reflection or is it impossible? Yeah, I think you must ask me about uh, forge packets to loopback interface. Um, no, um, when you reflect packets you never get any um, information about if the, um, the service was actually there. So do you have any means to find that out? I think you said that uh, you have no, no ways to force memcached to uh, ping you back uh, for you to know. So the techniques that you're um, you did not disclose for uh, other NoSQL um, databases should be applicable here to ping you back to, uh, for you to know that the service is actually there. Yes, for network scans. Yeah, I uh, already uh, told about NoSQL databases which have 
ping back ways to attacks in this. But uh, in Memcached, uh, Memcached have a simple syntax of a commands on the jet commands and set commands and uh, other simple commands such as version and states and have no ways to create a ping back attacks. And uh, maybe uh, attack vector may be uh, based on uh, s an exchange data from uh, Memcached B to Memcached A. And uh, maybe you can, uh, you can create an iterative attack vector and uh, use these infinite loops to iterate data from Memcached B, but it uh, looks like hard to, uh, <laughs> hard to <laughs> create this exploit. And I, I, can, uh, I can't uh, answer you now. But it looks like possible anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the second question uh, about uh, the client certificates, you said that uh, even if there is a, a plain HTTPS uh, website which uh, does not require the client certificate, you can modify your, um, your client to send the client certificate and the server will yeah. steal. Uh, yeah. Is it the yeah. common beha behavior or can it's, you d disclose any information about that? It's really commonly and uh, I shocked by that. Okay. Uh, and uh, the last question is about the URL schemas uh, that are allowed uh, in uh, the um, certificate, yeah. uh, uh, the, the client certificates. Uh, are there any powerful, powerful schemas such, such as Gopher and the like? Depends on uh, implementation, but I think that uh, <laughs> uh, Unix tools uh, use it uh, libqrl for that. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? No? If you have further questions, Vladimir will be around throughout the conference these two days. Please feel free to approach him um, if you have anything further. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Join me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.